Fight fans, his return from a long hiatus. One of my favorite fighters from back in the day, Dan Langbean, 38 years old, five foot, 10 inches tall, weighed in at 157 pounds, coming to us out of Macomb, Michigan, fighting the Michigan top team, top shelf fight team. 11 and six as an amateur, four and four as a pro. Tommy Badniasko, 32 years old, six foot even, weighed in at 155.2. Coming out of Redford, fighting out of the match, Jim. Coaches, as always, Don Richards, Todd Ali, and Kara Rowe. 14, six and two as an amateur. Three and three as a mixed martial artist. And I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I love both of these guys. And it bothers me that Pac-Man came out of retirement to fight Tommy because I want to see both of these guys win. And even I know that the math just will not work out that way. Somebody is leaving with a losing record. All right, fight fans, let's go into the cage. Kara KLO with your official THC introductions. Fight fans, another exciting matchup here in the lightweight division. When this fight gets underway, Dan Pac-Man Lang being fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black and white compression shorts. Tommy Banyasco fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black fight shorts. What a heavily anticipated fight. People have been talking about this for a while. You have that classic stand-up fighter in Dan. Tommy likes to throw the hands too, but sneaky off his back. But the elbows still wide of Tommy, bringing that kick. And Tommy keeping the range this time. We saw him making the mistake with Vince Murdoch is allowing Vince to get in his distance. And I think he learned a little bit about range there. Well, it's been a few years since Pac-Man's been in a cage, so you got to ask yourself, how heavy is the rust? Yeah, and, and you just never know. When you have such an extensive background, if you train right, you have the right sparring partners, you can really minimize the, the damage of that rust. Well, Banyasco trying to force a clinch. Certainly that's where he feels he's got the advantage. Now looking to pull that leg out, drag it to the ground. 
Getting himself in a little bit of trouble, but no stranger to working off his back. Yeah, and that's the thing. Tommy, probably out of all people out there, when he's on his back, it's a lot of times where he works best. So the best thing really for Dan to do, if he can, you know, create some space, is just to stand back up. I mean, his strength is on his feet. Just move back, stand back up. If he can stand up, if not, lock that thigh up. Don't even try to pass. Lock that thigh up. Sit on it so that Tommy's hips become frozen there. And then look to start punching. You know, and especially when Tommy's in his own corner with Don Richard coaching him. I mean, that's See, now Dan oh, can man, oh, big, big huge jump hit. kick. You know, people don't anticipate getting hit with those. You, you're aware of them, but you just don't think they're really going to land. And I think this might have rocked Dan a little bit. And this is what he should have done in the first place before that up kick is just taking that step back. And then when he got kicked, you know, he's got that fight response to fight or flight and so when he got kicked he just came forward again and got kicked again well Tommy the strange thing he'll train as a southpaw but standing orthodox to throw his hands and he's winding that right hand up too much telegraphing it Dan and needs to create some some angles you see Tommy who is arguably less of a qualified striker than Dan is he got away from that barrage by simply stepping off to the side not going back I just I think Dan isn't fully recovered from that up kick well, that was a big body shot from Langbean, but Tommy used it to take him right to the canvas. Langbean doing a good job of forcing it back to his feet and able to turn off of his back there. Well, Tommy obviously losing his ponytail or whatever he had in his hair because his hair is all over the way. <laughs> He's got if I had hair like different. that, I'd rock it too, believe me. <laughs> got to be careful he doesn't get thrown into a guillotine. Out comes the head, and Dan, we've already seen Dan a little bit stymied from here. Badniasko with that long body, really good at creating a very unstable platform for the guy on top. But Dan doing a good job of getting some, some separation. He landed a few elbows. Well, he needs to keep the weight on the hips. Now back, back off. Up. Don't. I don't, yeah. I, people, he doesn't understand. You know, Tommy's strength is from down here. There's some sneaky submissions he'll just pull off on you. Well, he almost walked himself right into a triangle. Because Dan, you know, can throw hands. He doesn't have to be as cautious with it. Tommy, very long and lanky. You've got to watch that up kick. There we go. Just disengage and let them both back on their feet. Tommy's doing a good job on his feet, though, with keeping that range. But he's winding up that right hand standing as an orthodox fighter. And Again, Dan just keeps coming back in a straight line. He, he seems actually uncomfortable standing up with Tommy. Which, you know, him being the, with the boxing back. Tommy, you know, he tried to step across for a hip throw. Had absolutely no off balance of, of his opponent and got drugged back to the ground for his trouble. And now he's in arguably the worst spot he's been in all fight. Dan can keep some down pressure on those hips, get a little posture and start bringing that right hand. Don't even worry about the left hand at this point. Got to start scoring. Dan again looking to rip him to the cage side. Tommy looked like he was about to hit a wrestling switch, but Langbean too quick to his knees. Establishing nice and tight again. Again with Tommy going the wrong direction to be able to turn back in and shrimp. Now trying to pull that knee in. I think the only place the rust has been a factor for Dan is on his feet because he's, you know, had the best of the two of them on the ground, which you'd never anticipate coming into this fight. No, you don't, but you know how sneaky Tommy is off his back. And you have to, you have you to still give relax. the edge to Tommy, absolutely. It's looking like a playground fight for just a second there with those body <laughs> shots, Kara. Well, Tommy just winding up with that. I mean, if you train as a southpaw, come in this and fight as, with your hands as a southpaw. Tommy's got to watch. He doesn't give up a jaw lock or neck crank there. Now sliding down deep. Ten seconds left. Going to get the takedown to make the judges happy. But Lang being able to reverse it. And with a uh, short time, they're not going to be able to get anything finished here. But man, landing One a big blow. Shot for the judges. Yep. Wow. That was a great Welcome back, Pac-Man. <laughs> Definitely him taking that round, regardless of Tommy being on his back and the confidence we have in that, he just didn't rip off any submission attempts that we would have expected from him. Tommy's doing a good job. You know, I think he really learned in some of his previous fights. He's got to keep that range. Don't get in tight with someone who can drop their hands and who's coming from a shorter distance. With those wide elbows, I would bring a front kick right up to his chin. Tommy's just got to watch where he winds up those 
shots with his right hand. Well, and you know, he is just really going to the body aggressively as they close. I'm really digging that. Getting the better of Lang being in the clinch too. Vagnasco doing a good job. Oh, head down, gotta watch this big knee coming up. I'll tell you what, I think he wisely bailed out there. I think he thought he was gonna wind up eating the end of that knee. Again, Langby got to watch that triangle, doing a good job posturing as he got in trouble there. He's done a great job of fighting off submissions. I mean, we expect Tommy to run some of the submission attempts, but Dan has fought everything off great, very well. Looking to score with elbows. He's got to keep, he's got to force a little bit of separation. He's letting Tommy tie up that arm in his head like that. And it, it doesn't give Tommy any ability to score, but it keeps him out of danger. It lets the clock tick away, it lets him recharge. And if they do get stood up, he's getting the better of Dan on his feet. I just, I think because of just the activity of Dan, he's got on the ground game, I mean, he's come out with the, the double. Gotta watch clock. the double leg sweep there, almost got himself caught there, the ankle pick. Well, that's why you can never, you can't relax with Tommy. Like when he's on the bottom, don't ever underestimate what he can do down there. No, and that was just a little bit sloppy from Dan also to put himself in that position to begin with. Doing a good job of scoring, not much damage, but keeping busy, as you said, keeping Tommy in trouble and chewing up the clock in the, ju in the judge's eyes, winning this round. Yeah, I mean, I think he took the first round too, so. Tommy has to do just a little bit more. I run the submissions like he tried, try and find some position, just be a little more active. Tommy was trying to reach over the arm there, look for a Kimura, but he's not pulling Langbean off of his base at all. It's really tough to accomplish anything against a guy who's got a halfway decent defense. And as we've seen, Langbean, for as rusty as he may be, he's doing a great job of just staying out of any trouble from who you would have thought was the superior I, submissions guy. I am, I'm surprised completely by the way this has turned out overall. Gotta watch the up kick now. Just separate. There we go, Brennan Gallo, our referee, gonna get him stood back up here. Tommy's gotta stop winding up that right hand. I mean, it can't land when you pull it all the way back like that. His elbow should never go behind his body. And Dan keeps letting him just drive him to the side of the cage and take the clinch. Oh, nice takedown from Langbean. If Tommy had taken his other foot and moved it back, he'd have been able to turn that around on the way down. But instead, it wound up looking like Langbean was chopping down a tree and they just fell over nice and slowly. Well, you can see the instincts of Dan, you know, being the hands guy, because he's always looking to drop leather. He's always looking to, you know, kind of isolate an arm. He's trying to look for some open space to, to land some shots. Now doing a good job of crowding. And you see how Tommy's in that half guard with his inside leg out. It's tough for him to pull his hips out that way. And so he's, he's actually getting himself stuck there against the side of the cage because there's no ability for him to stand up. You know, and this is where, you know, coming into this, Dan obviously prepared. You've seen enough of Tommy's footage to, to be prepared for Tommy to be on his back and be comfortable there. And he's actually making Tommy uncomfortable, which we rarely see. Absolutely, and as Tommy got postured there to start running, Langby just helped him turn and pulled his legs completely off of it. Gotta watch that triangle again. Coming up on short time here, Carol. I know, and I mean, this may put Dan with two rounds in the books. Tommy's doing a good job of throwing elbows off of his back, though, also. I just don't think it's enough. It's not, the judges, you can't see as much of those landing from the bottom. That's the trouble. Tommy's done a great job with his kicks. He just needs to stand up, drop some of those kicks with that long range. He need to, he got close Look at again. Lady not even trying to take him down. Hold that leg up and just trip hammer through and the you know, I, That's the thing, Tommy came close. He should have stayed at that full range and threw the kicks like he was doing in the first round. 10 seconds. And I'll tell you what, outstanding finish to this round for Langbean. What these judges are going to go to their scorecards remembering is Langbean just oh. playground beating yeah, Tommy yeah. Bagnasco up on his feet there. And just pal driving him back down to the ground. I mean, not where you even expect Dan to take it, but he just feels, definitely feels comfortable, feels like he can overmatch Tommy on the ground. Do you think those rounds that either fighter 
distinguish themselves that they they could say comfortably, yeah, I've won those rounds. I would never go into a third round thinking that, but I think Dan took those rounds. I don't think we've seen the Tommy that we typically see running submissions. You know, we usually see Tommy wrapping his legs around guys' heads and arms and chests, like just submission attempt after submission attempt. We haven't seen that. Oh, that's where the rust, we're seeing the rust with those uh, some of those punches we've seen. Looking to work the clinch again, and just, that's like the third time he's overpowered Tommy and brought it straight to the ground. But I think typically Tommy's been okay with that in the past you, because he's so comfortable off his back. So he's been okay with, oh, I'll go to the ground, I'll go on my back, no problem. But he just hasn't been able to make any moves off of the place that he's typically comfortable. Dan's got to drop that left hip. And Tommy doing a good job of rolling out and turning to his knees. Now this is where Langbein missed an opportunity last time. As Tommy came up, he had the opportunity to actually put his teeth in the back of his head and missed another one this time too. Knee up the center. Tommy trying to throw some little body shots, but he's got to watch, protect himself. And a return Again, knee up the belly. In transition, Langbein with some big shots and scores. Got to be careful he doesn't get sucked down here. He's got to really sprawl hard and just really turn in on that wizard. Now back to his feet. Tommy missing a great opportunity, but then on the second win, coming up clean into Mount Carroll. This could yeah. be trouble for Langbein. I don't know. He's holding. He's, he's going to try and smother all that and look for a reverse. Going to look to turn out the back door here, and Kara somehow he made it. But uh, Tommy was in that relaxed mode. Somehow he made it. Tommy Bagnasco completely mounted. Now on his back yet again without really scoring any heavy shots. You almost look at like there's a strength difference between Tommy and, and Dan, just Dan being able to get the better of him. I think Dan is definitely the, the more physically dominant. In the past, that's never been a big deal well, for They Tommy. forced him to cut an extra pound last night, Dan at weigh-ins. And you know, typically Tommy's that one, running in the parking lot, cutting some extra weight, but Tommy came in and weighed and Dan had to hit that extra pound. But well, sweat I, it out quickly. I'll tell you what, he looks kind of honorary, like he had to lose an extra pound. Nice butterfly sweep. But you know, you can't the back miss. door again. I mean, he is, transitions are phenomenal. He, as soon as he feels himself in trouble, he he flips the switch. He's got to continue to posture there. Nice, cleanly shutting down that triangle attempt. That's twice we've seen Tommy mounted and unable to score. He was trying to throw from the bottom a little bit, bottom a little bit, but uh, you know, I'm just surprised we haven't seen, you know, the Tommy that we typically see from 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 his back. Lady needs to crowd him a little bit tighter on the side of that cage, bring those knees up a little tighter, and then he can posture, make Tommy carry a little bit of weight, and start bringing some heavy leather to finish this third round. I mean, what an exciting fight. Yeah. What a great return for Dan Pac-Man Langbean. But I really think it's a it's a shutout. He's got I, Tommy I, cut across his yeah. eye, Kara. I mean, he's been bleeding for, for a little bit now. It's just spreading everywhere, getting in Tommy's eye, having trouble seeing. And he's just got to work. Like, see that blood, smell that blood, and just get in there and just work as hard as you can. Oh, yeah. When you smell that iron in the air, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> And look at him working on that eye right now. You know, he's done a good job of trying to constantly do damage. I mean, it's weird. Hopefully this he just, is a medical he just, stoppage. He just threw three punches on Tommy, and then they stop. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Well, and, the, and he did not call time either. No, that, I mean, for me, there has to be some lull in the action. That has to be something for... Dan well, just no, he wants three. the referee. He wants the referee to take a look at that cut, or not the ref. That's the cage doctor. Oh, I understand to take a look that, at that, but cut. to stop to, to stop the fight in the middle of Dan dropping some leather. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's where a TKO happens, right? And again, that is uh, you know one of the big gripes on Michigan officiating. Because if I'm throwing punches at you and your eye is bleeding and getting in your eye, you don't get to stop and clean it out. I get to finish the damage I was doing. Tommy's just got to stay. Keep that right. Like, I mean, he threw his kicks earlier and he was at a better range. It was He was doing a great job. Well, what he can't do is let Tommy use that opportunity to steal this round from him. That would just be 
horrendous. Nice takedown again. Oh, that, uh, that is in deep. It's slipping out. He manages to turn through. That would have been the that would have been horrible. Just turning point, as we would say in Canada, TSN turning point. I love both of these guys, but to see a fight lost on a suspect referee decision like that would have just been brutal. Right. But I, I really think though, like I've just seen, it seems like Dan has dominated. I just don't think we've seen the Tommy that we've seen in the past. 10 seconds. Dan needs to add a few more heavy shots for these judges. And this is where you got to keep your hands up. Be well aware because anything can happen. We've seen fights stop, you know, at like, uh, 4 minutes and 59 seconds. Last or week at TWC, 10-second bell sounds. Daquan Townsend, Dominic, yes, I saw and night-night goes Dominic. All right, the cards are tallied. Let's go into the cage. Kara, K.O. Rowe with your official TXC decision.